back here with another Friday update. And Skip, an obvious question with the recent snowfall people might think is, what does a team like you do? How does that affect your preparation? Well, we always face that, you know, being um, what we would consider a northern school, uh, you know, how do the, we, we hear it in recruiting all the time, weather having an impact on our program. Really, it doesn't. Uh, we, we have, and I'm not just saying it's not a personal opinion, but one of the best, if not the best, indoor facilities in the country. Uh, we are allowed to do everything from our drills, um, our full practices. We even scrimmage, run full camps in there. We're, we're running 80-some kids through camp in there. So we, we are blessed at Indiana University to have the top-notch indoor facility in the country. And I think that's a great question because what I think we should do in the midst of our little uh, white uh, snowstorm here, I want to call it a snowstorm, but our little white blanket of snow out there, let's take a trek down to our indoor facility and let our fans of Indiana baseball take a look at our, our quality indoor complex. So you want to come along and show it to them? Let's do it. <laughs>country the John Mellencamp Pavilion uh, a lot of people don't know it but it's the legendary rocker John Mellencamp he's a Bloomington resident here was uh, kind enough to donate some funds and, and make this a reality but we truly feel we have uh, one of the most awesome indoor facilities as you can see over my shoulder right now we're in the session we're just these aren't our uh, regular team practices yet we get X amount of hours two hours a week to work with our guys but uh, what I hope to show you and show you some footage of is that we can do basically everything we need to do. What you have going on right now is just a, a simulated pitcher-hitter scenario, but you can see we have plenty of space where we'll actually do games. And so uh, we'll give you a couple different views here, but we love this facility, and uh, we'll, we will play in rain, sleet, and snow. It doesn't matter. Michael Basil from Cincinnati, and they get inclement weather in Cincinnati. What do you think of the Mellon Camp facility? Uh, we definitely have a chance to come in here and do things that a lot of other teams don't have. Get to come in here, get a field and hit. Right, we got we got a California native here, who Southern California, where they claim they have 70 degree weather the whole time, but we don't have 70 degree weather today. Do you like the Mellon Camp facility? Yeah. Nothing. I don't think. There's too much to complain about in here. It's uh, harder for hitters to see the balls as a pitcher. That's a good thing. So build your ego. Yeah, exactly. Confidence. Build your confidence, build your ego. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. All right, all right Coach, we're back from Mellencamp. Let's get into the questions of the week. Uh, what you got going on today? Well, you know, I, I love the fact we're, we're problem solvers around here. If our fans looked at last week, we solved the problem of our, our apparel issues, and we're kind enough from the people in the, 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 the varsity shop down here to make sure that we're getting – our fans, the much-needed material. So let's move on to the questions this week. This this one comes from Scott from Clarksville, Tennessee. Long-time IU baseball fan, first-time emailer. I like that. Can you please explain the new idiotic 20-second pitch clock with no runners on base rule? And please give us your personal opinion. Well, Scott, the rule generates a lot of the, it's, it's It's dictated on the pace of play. There are a lot of programs in the country that – take a lot of time between pitches. And I just think this is one of the things with more television, particularly Big Ten Network, um, for us that they want to increase and in, um, uh, the pace of the game and decrease the time that it takes to play the game. And, and uh, you know, you, will, you won't see anything different from Indiana because our guys, we, we preach that already. But I think it probably more generates from the West Coast where I understand their baseball is played at a very, very slow pace. A lot of times they relay signs in from pitches, and it's sometimes take it up to a minute between pitches. So um, while I think it is a little um, uh, uh, extreme maybe to have a pitch clock, but it's really just going to be an umpire with a, basically a stopwatch or something in their pocket uh, making sure. But, yeah, there's penalties. If you, don't, if you don't make the pitch in 20 seconds, 
they could call a, a ball, or if you're not in the batter's box in 20 seconds, they'll call a strike. So I like it. Um, I, I, we, we've already been doing it, so it's really going to be nothing different for us. So thank you, uh, Scott from Clarksville. Uh, the second question, uh, this comes from Scott from Dartown, Ohio. If we were to go through your complete CD collection, what CD would you say would be the one you could do without, and which one would you not want us to find? That is an interesting question, Scott. Um, I would say the one that I couldn't do without would probably be Kenny Chesney's Lucky Old Son. Uh, that's one of my favorites. When I'm singing in her car on recruiting trips, I sometimes think I even sound like Kenny. But, of course, I'm alone. The, uh, the one that uh, I wouldn't want people to find, uh, i got to go with Barry Manilow's Greatest Hits. Uh, you know, I, I, I probably shouldn't say that uh, across the, the Internet, but I'm going to go with Barry Manilow's Greatest Hits. And, again, I think I'm a pretty good Barry imitator. So thank you for your question, Scott and Dartown. Uh, two questions, kind of under the same theme. Uh, this comes from Tyler, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I also know you're a very average Call of Duty player. You work hard, but still very average. I don't really appreciate that, Tyler. Uh, but could you possibly tell me what gun is the best in Call of Duty? My personal pref uh, preference, Tyler, is the Galil. Uh, maybe add a suppressor with a red dot scope on that or possibly a reflex scope, depending on your personal preference. I secondarily back that up with an RB uh, RPG missile launcher. And uh, my perks, I go with the Ghost, the Warlord, the Warlord is my second perk, so I can add the Suppressor and the Sight on there, and then I go Ninja, because I don't want people to hear me and see me coming. But good question on the Call of Duty. The second on that theme comes from Mike uh, from Chicago, Illinois. Do you still have heated Call of Duty battles pre- and post-practice for your players? I think that is what really jump-started the IU program and where it is today. Ha ha. Well, Mike, you know what? Um, I'm not going to answer that. Let's uh, let's go check ourselves. So follow, let, let's go see. Come on. Before we head down to the locker room, I'm going to stop into the coaches because we're just getting ready to practice and make sure we're on date there. So hey, you guys, uh, we got the practice plans all ready, all over it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right there. All over. So it. I guess not only the players are preparing, but also the coaching staff. So. Uh, you guys carry yeah. on with your mission, and we'll uh, we need a fourth. carry on, and we'll <laughs> check with the baseball players. IU baseball. <laughs> All right, now, we've obviously seen with the coaches. Let's check in on the players and see what's going on in here. Ah! So, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, Mike, the, those battles still do exist. But in all seriousness, you know, the guys and – you know, those things are to supplement our program and do on their free time. And because pre and post practice, our guys are getting extra reps. That's the environment we create around here. But uh, no, they have fun, and that's something we try to do here at Indiana.